This video is sponsored by Jagged Alliance 3, allowing us to donate $10,000 to video game preservation. The Jagged Alliance series has a tumultuous history, with each core title in the series having a different developer and publisher, and with Jagged Alliance 3 being announced in 2004, but not seeing a release until 2023. In this video, we'll delve into the series history and speak directly with the developers of Jagged Alliance 3. Due to this video being sponsored, we'll also be donating $10,000 to help preserve video game history. We asked folks on YouTube how they'd feel if we used sponsored videos as a way to give back to the community, and the response was overwhelmingly positive. So, here we are. This time, the money will go to Hit Save, and will be used to help preserve all kinds of video games and games media. Honestly, the history of the Jagged Alliance series is a bit of a roller coaster. So, if you want to find out more about the most hectic tactic series ever to grace PC gaming, buckle up. The original Jagged Alliance was developed by Mad Lab Software and published by Surtech in 1995. The game reviewed and sold well, at least enough to get an expansion a year later subtitled Deadly Games. The series was created by Mad Lab, but by the time Deadly Games released, the studio had merged into Surtech. Jagged Alliance 2 began development within Surtech, but Surtech's US publishing arm went bankrupt. The IP then moved to Surtech Canada, so the game was developed by them and published by Talonsoft. Despite multiple total ground-up rewrites and several delays, Jagged Alliance 2 received praise upon its release in 1999, and sold even more than the first game. Unfortunately for the series IP, the problems thus far were tame compared to what was to come. A standalone sequel, Unfinished Business, released just a year later, still made by Surtek, but published by Interplay. Jagged Alliance 2 then got two re-releases, a gold pack in 2002 which had improvements from Unfinished Business, and Wildfire, which was essentially a more feature-rich Jagged Alliance 2. After a dispute with their publisher, Strategy First, Wildfire developer Ideal Games made a new version published by Zux's Entertainment instead, featuring even more content. Now, from here, the situation with the Jagged Alliance IP becomes even more of a mess, with over a decade of disputes and financial issues. So, Strategy First, who now owned the rights to the series, entered a partnership with Game Factory Interactive, or GFI, and announced that GFI studio Mistland South would develop two new games, Jagged Alliance 3D and Jagged Alliance 3. 3D would be a 3D remake of Jagged Alliance 2, and the engine and resources made for this game would be reused to make Jagged Alliance 3. However, after GFI proposed that 3D should be real-time instead of turn-based, Strategy First lost confidence in GFI and withdrew the rights for Jagged Alliance 3. Jagged Alliance 3D ended up going back to turn-based gameplay anyway due to fan backlash. And after Mistland South was dissolved in 2006, Strategy First withdrew all rights to the series. With no other option, GFI had to rework the game into a new title, resulting in 2007's Hired Guns – The Jagged Edge. Somehow, unbelievably, this wasn't the end of the series' woes. Jagged Alliance 3's fate was now in the hands of Akella and F3 Games. And though they aimed for a 2008 release, the game was delayed multiple times into 2010. In late 2009, Akella stopped development on Jagged Alliance 3 entirely, leaving the series' future uncertain. In March 2010, Bit Composer Games picked up the rights and began development again for a 2011 release, but this seemed to go nowhere either. While Jagged Alliance 3 remained in limbo, four more Jagged Alliance games released in the years following, all with poor reviews. Then, in August 2015, Nordic Games, now THQ Nordic, acquired the rights from Bit Composer, and this is where Heimemont Games comes into the picture. After hearing that THQ now had the license, Heimemont actually pitched an entirely different Jagged Alliance game to the publisher. However, THQ Nordic was so impressed by the pitch and Heimemont's portfolio of strategy games that they offered them a crack at Jagged Alliance 3, finally ending Jagged Alliance 3's unfortunate stint in development hell. Jagged Alliance 3 would release in 2023, almost two decades after it was announced. 
We were curious about what Hamemont Games thought about the whole ordeal, and if they had access to any of the assets or concepts made by all those other teams who attempted making Jagged Alliance 3. One of the game's creative directors, Boyan Spasov, told us, I remember being excited when a game named Jagged Alliance 3 was announced in 2004, and then ultimately disappointed it was never released. Our title is not related at all to the one from 2004, and was initially conceptualized and pitched as a high-level concept by Hamemont during late 2018. The official kickoff of the project happened in May 2019. The team jumped at the opportunity, but after almost 25 years of games failing to live up to Jagged Alliance 2, the pressure was on. Boyan elaborated, The community has been disappointed many times, and with so many fans of the old games on the team, there was quite a bit of internal pressure to, quote, break the Jagged Alliance curse. When our game was announced, I had several friends telling me, don't you dare get this wrong this time. The team were all fans of tactics games, and as well as Jagged Alliance, they mentioned 2003's Silent Storm and the XCOM series being inspirations of theirs. They'd also made a turn-based tactics game years earlier titled Omerta, City of Gangsters. Boyan added that although Omerta was much smaller in scope, it was partially inspired by Jagged Alliance, and the team learned a lot while making it. Anyone who follows this channel will know we love hearing about unused ideas and cut content, so we asked Boyan if there were any big changes in development or ideas that just wouldn't fit in. He said, I remember we briefly discussed a fictional Eastern European setting inspired by the Yugoslavia Wars. This happened during early conceptualization, even before the official pitch. It was a cool idea that we may revisit sometime, however, for Jagged Alliance 3, we preferred the more varied and vibrant aesthetics of Africa, so we agreed on the fictional country of Grand Chian as our setting. This fictional country faced turmoil during the early 2000s, a time period the devs chose so they could target a nostalgic, old action movie feel. They didn't know it at the time, but this choice would heavily impact the game's look, especially its UI. Early on, the team went with a modern and minimalistic looking UI that, although efficient, failed to capture the unique feel of Jagged Alliance 2. The devs felt that Jagged Alliance 2's Sir OS laptop made you feel like the mastermind that plans and executes the mission behind the screen. So to recapture that magic, they had to think back to the early 2000s and, quote, remember the old days of ICQ, MIRC, and a very young internet with non-functional sites, bad connections, and pop-up ads. One of the team's earliest and biggest inspirations for the UI came from the Palm devices that were prevalent in the early 2000s. Some folks might have noticed that the game's Oak 2 is a reference to PDAs like the Palm 3. They even took this lo-fi aesthetic into the active gameplay, with the Merc's portraits and even some of the in-game visuals like enemy silhouettes having subtle effects on them to emulate a bad phone connection. But this turn-of-the-millennium tech vibe didn't fit everywhere. The team initially tried using OS-style icons of physical items for inventory management, but it felt off. They ended up making a physical crate to manage items instead, and the devs note that at different points in development, the device versus crate aesthetic took over different UI screens until they reached the balance seen in the final game. After hearing about the troubles with the UI, we asked Boyan if the team had encountered any other unexpected challenges. He told us, For quite a while, combat felt somewhat sterile, as if you were playing more in the user interface instead of in the world. Hiding the chance to hit numbers was the linchpin design decision that made the combat work and feel as we wanted it. During Jagged Alliance 3's early days, the UI displayed a visible chance to hit, like in XCOM, but during playtesting, the team noticed folks were hyper-focusing on the numbers, and it was deciding everything they did, with one example being players never took a low-chance shot. Players were also left frustrated when a high-probability shot missed. Removing the numbers led to players being more immersed in the actual scenario. Everyone on the team loved the change, including the creator of the Jagged Alliance franchise, Ian Curry. Ever since finishing his work on Jagged Alliance 2 Unfinished Business, Ian's been busy working on games like Star Trek Legacy and Dungeons & Dragons Online. But a few years ago, he was brought back into the fold, when THQ Nordic reached out to him, asking if he'd be interested in working on a new Jagged Alliance. 
He was skeptical at first, and who could blame him after the series' recent offerings, but he was assured that they'd, quote, do it right this time, and were going for a true Jagged Alliance 3. But Ian's skepticism lifted when he got to see some early prototypes and design docs, and realized the team's heart was in it this time. They wanted Ian to be fully involved, doing the story, quests, characters, mercs, dialogue, everything. Ian accepted the role and brought on his former colleague and published author, Dan McClure, who he'd met while working on Empire Earth 3. Many aspects of the game took time to nail down, like the game's bullet simulation. Players can hit enemies through walls and even other enemies in Jagged Alliance 3 thanks to the game running a set of calculations for every bullet that's fired based on the caliber and type of bullet as well as whatever the bullet hits after being fired. This means low accuracy shots could miss and hit something unexpected, but it could also mean an accurate shot goes through a target and hits something behind it that players didn't account for. But the devs think all that effort was worth it, and enhances the chaotic realism of the game. Speaking of gunfire, the developers had an incredibly difficult time recording the sounds of gunshots. They quickly realized they couldn't record shots anywhere that was walled in like an indoor shooting range, as the reverberation in the recordings made them unusable. So they started looking for outdoor ranges that had the right guns and ammo in stock, and eventually found one that was fairly comprehensive but lacking a few things they needed. During the recording, the team accidentally stumbled into the Bulgarian military special forces and explained who they were and what they were doing. Fast forward a few months, and the team were invited to record at the military's special training site. Not only did they now have experts on hand, but they had access to a full arsenal of weapons that no civilian was normally allowed access to, letting them get every sound effect they could ever want. Another important aspect of the Jagged Alliance legacy is the modding community. A big part of what made the second game successful and kept the community alive was its mod support, and mods like version 1.13, which was an enhanced and partial conversion mod of Jagged Alliance 2 Gold. Because of this, we decided to ask Boyan Spasov about mod support on Jagged Alliance 3 and how it impacted development. He told us, even though we announced mods relatively close to release, extensive modding support has been planned since the start of the project. We've always thought the modding aspect to be extremely important to the game. There were many mods even in the first few days after launch, and with the upcoming additional modding support, I can only imagine what we will see in the following months. We would love to someday play a user-created mod of the original Jagged Alliance 2 campaign recreated in Jagged Alliance 3. After talking about mods, Boyan also said to us that the Jagged Alliance 3 Discord community was a big help during development and wanted to thank them for their suggestions, feedback, and for helping newcomers get to grips with the game. If what you've seen today has piqued your interest, Jagged Alliance 3 is out now for PC and is available on Steam and GOG.com. You can click the link at the top of the description or just search Jagged Alliance 3 on your preferred store. And keep your eyes peeled because Jagged Alliance 3 is coming soon to consoles. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.